The fleet problems of the United States Navy were large training exercises intended to test new concepts as much as to train the fleet. The twelfth of these exercises is rather a classic example in this regard, intended for more than one result. The core thrust of this particular one was in testing how a fleet with strong carrier backing would fare against a fleet with strong battleship forces, with the larger aspect being a defense and assault upon the Panama Canal. This particular fleet problem took place in 1931, when carriers were still very much a new thing. As I mentioned in the Arkansas video, she served as the flagship of one of these fleets, and is why I'm covering this topic now. More specifically, Arkansas was flagship of the Blue Force. This was the carrier focus of the two, boasting the only two proper carriers in the USN at the time, Lexington and Saratoga, as well as shore-based aircraft and USS Los Angeles, an airship. This gave a fairly strong concentration of air power for 1931, though the counterpoint was that Blue Force only had Arkansas for heavy surface combatants. Most of that fleet consisted of cruisers and lighter warships, along with the carriers. Black Force, the opposing fleet, had nine battleships, but only the planes the battleships and cruisers could carry, along with the handful of the old and slow USS Langley. This fleet problem would, after all, be a test of air power versus surface power. For all of that, it began fairly inconclusively. Black Force split up into multiple task forces when spotted by Blue. This worked to divide attention, though the Admiral aboard Arkansas, one Arthur Willard, would focus on the landing force portion of Black Force. Those transports were, after all, an easier target than the battleships, and would fulfill a portion of the mission in any event. Arkansas, the star of this video, would be stationed close to the coast of Panama, while the carriers were the main offensive thrust. Arkansas could never keep up with the big conversions, and of course, could not beat nine battleships solo, or even a split force of those battleships. Black Force would do similar actions. The cruisers Northampton and Pensacola would raid the Panamanian coast, sinking an unfortunate pair of a minesweeper and an oiler. This was just a raid, of course, so they didn't stick around long. On their quick exit, the pair would run across Arkansas, steaming towards them. The three ships would trade salvos, though this would prove decidedly ineffective on both sides. Arkansas would not land any simulated hits on the cruisers, nor would they do the same to her. The battleship was too slow to close the range, while the cruisers could easily disengage when they needed to. That being said, the cruisers couldn't sink the battleship either, nor could they even do enough simulated damage to take her out of effective action. The weather wasn't great, and the cruisers were also having issues with their catapults, making it impossible to use their scouts. That made their long-range fire inaccurate and ineffective, which did disappoint the commander of Black Force, who was expecting the cruisers to be able to outrange and outperform Arkansas. But since Arkansas couldn't catch them as they retreated, it was kind of a wash. Neither side got any bonus here, but neither side lost anything here. This could have still worked to Arkansas's advantage. Since the flagship was still in action, she could continue to direct events and serve as a heavy hitter if cruisers or destroyers tried a similar raid. Or she could also serve as a fallback point for the carriers if that became necessary. It was not meant to be. Arkansas would be hit by a simulated torpedo run on the evening of February 19th. This was ruled as sufficient hypothetical damage to sink the battleship, which removed her from the remainder of the exercise. Wow, I'm sure American Submariners would wish they could pull that off a decade later. Anyway, with Arkansas and Willard out of the battle, it fell entirely on the carriers to try and stop Black Force. This they would attempt, but in the end it would be ruled that the carriers could not stop the oncoming battleships. Black Force would batter aside the carriers and accomplish their objective, as it was ruled that the airstrikes failed to stop the battle wagons. This is not entirely unexpected, as this was 1931, and carriers were still in their infancy, with only two of them available to even try and stop the battleships. For her part, Arkansas would become the leader of further exercises after the fleet problem proper, where she would continue to serve well, often playing the role of multiple battleships. 
What Fleet Problem 12 itself, and Arkansas's part in it, would ultimately demonstrate? That carriers could be used well, but were not quite to the point of taking over yet. That a battleship, even a slow one, could still force cruisers to pull away if she had to. And that cruisers could still have difficulties if they couldn't use their scout planes in an era before radar. These are all valuable lessons, to be sure. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content, and I'll see you in the next one.